In this video, we'll be going over 10 creatures that would fit perfectly into a Halloween or horror themed game. All of which will be CR5 or lower. And also, I'll leave out a whole bunch of very common monster types, as I'm pretty sure you don't need me to tell you that a vampire makes a good horror boss. And at number 10, we have the Skulk. The Skulk is a CR one half creature who has the distinction of being permanently invisible, and has a trait where it can only be seen through three different unique methods in addition to the normal methods of seeing invisibility, like blind sight or seeing visibility, of course. Where you can only see it through the reflection of a mirror, or if there is a light from a candle rendered from the corpse of an identity that is unknown, or through a humanoid child who is age 10 or under. And the Skulk actually has a really hard-hitting claws ability, which deals extra damage if it has advantage on the target, which it should always have since it's always invisible. The Skulk makes an excellent monster for low-level games, because it has a description like it's straight out of a horror movie. Some children have imaginary friends that their parents can't see. Sometimes those invisible friends aren't imaginary. You can have your party members walk through a town and just hear rumors of children seeing an invisible guy who's walking through the city, where eventually they might be hired to track him down. And trying to defeat the thing at low levels is a quest in of itself, as it's really hard to track down since it has the trackless feature, and a plus 8 to its stealth. And seeing as skulks are usually summoned to the material world through a ritual, it's really easy to just kind of add it to any town to make it a little bit more spooky. And at number 9, we have the Gibbering Mouther. The Gibbering Mouther is an abomination of eyeballs and mouths, and definitely makes this list for just looking like a horror monster, while equally being a pretty dangerous one, as it made into my list of the top 10 most dangerous CR2 creatures. Its one attack is called Bites, plural, because it has so many mouths that they all just kind of bite at once. And it has one of the hardest hitting single target attacks for its CR rating. It also passively slows creatures who are nearby because it turns the ground into a dough-like structure. And it can also knock targets prone with its bites ability. So if knocked prone, there's a chance they won't be able to stand up due to its aberrant ground feature, having a chance to make their speed zero that turn, because you need to spend half your movement to be able to stand up. So if you fall down next to a Gibbery Mouther, there's a good chance it might attack you until it just kills you. And then absorbs you into itself, as its Bites ability has the ability to absorb creatures that it kills with it. In addition, it has a passive confusion effect if you start to turn within 20 feet of it, and it can even spit to blind creatures within a 5 foot radius of its impact. The only downside to the Gibbery Mouther is that it's really slow. Like, ridiculously slow at only 10 ground and swim speed. Although, since it does have a swim speed, that makes it an excellent ambush predator, especially if they're near any kind of source of water, like an underground water dungeon or some kind of swampy area. And at number 8, we have the Intellect Devourer. This is a small CR2 creature which has the ability to steal an opponent's brain and then take control of that body. This is one of the few low CR creatures which has the ability to instantly end a character's career, and generally has this feature because it's supposed to be a minion of a higher CR creature. And it's also a walking brain, which definitely gives it the creepy factor that allows it to make this list. Now, how exactly it instantly disables a character is through a series of checks. First off, it has its bolty attack, which allows it to attack with its claws and then use its Devour Intellect ability. Devour Intellect requires a target to fail a DC-12 intelligence saving throw, where they'll then take some psychic damage and then have to perform a unique check, where the Intellect Devourer rolls a 3d6, and if the value of that roll is equal to or larger than the intelligence score of the creature, then their intelligence score is set to zero, where they're permanently stunned until they regain at least one point of intelligence, which can't be done unless someone in the party has greater restoration or some higher level magic. And then once a target is permanently stunned through this feature, They'll then attempt a Body Thief on their next turn when they get a chance, where, as an action, the Intellect Devourer initiates an Intelligence Contest with an Incapacitated Humanoid within 5 feet of it. An Intelligence Contest is just rolling a straight d20 and then adding your Intelligence Modify to it, without any kind of proficiencies. The Intellect Devourer only has a plus 1 to its Intelligence, however, the Devourer will wait until it succeeded on its Devour Intellect in order to use Body Thief. Which means the target it's using the ability on will have an intelligence of zero, and have a minus five to that intelligence roll. So there's a very high chance it will succeed. And if it does, then it will instantly magically consume the brain and teleport into the skull of the body, taking control of it. And then, that's kind of donezo for that character. The only way to get the body back is through a wish spell, or through some other way that you can regrow the brain immediately as soon as the intellect of our leaves the skull. As the body dies within one round, unless you somehow manage to get a replacement brain in. And at number 7, we have the Dolgaunt. 
This is a CR3 creature that just looks really creepy, and kind of makes on this list for that alone. Plus, it's one of the hardest hitting single target damage dealers at the CR3 rating. As with its multi-attack, it allows you to hit four times and can deal around 30 damage on average while also restoring some of its hit points. And since the Dogaunt is so easy to use and doesn't require a whole bunch of complicated positioning or special abilities or unique saving throws like the previous spots, it's definitely an excellent creature to throw into a game that's just very straightforward in how you use it. It has high movement speed, a high AC, evasion, and just goes in to attack things four times, and can auto-grapple with Lance's tentacles, which have a 15-foot range. The Dogon might not be as scary as an Intellect Devourer, but it's definitely more effective at taking down player characters by just doing a whole bunch of damage to them. So the Dogaunt is an excellent, easy to use extra creature to add to a horror game. If you don't want to use just a whole bunch of zombies and skeletons, but also want an easy to use creature. And at number six, we have the Doppelganger. This is a CR3 creature which can turn itself into a small or medium humanoid creature that it's seen, and is the perfect creature to put into a game that you want a party members to find a hidden monster like a popular online game about an imposter who goes around killing their teammates. Because the Doppelganger is the perfect ambusher. As during the first round of combat, a Doppelganger has advantage on all of its attack rolls against the creature that is surprised, and deals extra 3d6 damage to targets that are surprised. That it can proc two times since its multi-attack allows it to hit twice. In addition, it's just really good at pretending to be someone else and convincing everyone that it's not a monster disguised as a regular person, because it has the read thoughts action, where it can just read the surface level thoughts of one creature within 60 feet of it, and even has the added benefits of giving it advantage on insight, deception, intimidation, and persuasion checks against that target. It also has a passive plus six to its deception, so it's just really good at pretending to be someone else and convincing everyone else that it is in fact not an imposter. And you can kind of set whole campaigns around trying to find a doppelganger in a village or some other setting where your campaign takes place, Doppelgangers are pretty versatile where they can be placed, and can easily be used in some kind of horror-themed game. Maybe one where everyone is stuck in one set location, and one of the friendly NPCs is actually a doppelganger who's trying to kill everyone else. And at number 5, we have the Niyogi. This is a CR3 creature, which kind of looks like an eel spider thing, and definitely makes it on this list for its creepiness factor, as well as some of the lore tied to it. Basically, the Niyogi are an alien race that considers everyone who's weaker than them to be servants or prey, including other Niyogi. And because they have a compulsion to just control everyone they consider weaker, they have an enslave trait, where once a combat they can force a DC-14 wisdom saving throw on a target, where on failure they magically charm that creature for one day. And the creature has to obey the Niyogi's commands, but each time they take damage they have a chance to break this mind control. And they also have a bite ability which has a chance to poison every time it hits. When it comes to the combat capabilities of the Niyogi, they can definitely hold their own, especially if they're able to successfully land one of their enslaves. But what I found especially creepy about the Niyogi was the little section that details their cycle of death and life, which states in so many words that when the Niyogi reaches old age and starts weakening, the other Niyogi will transform the old creature with a whole bunch of toxins to make them a bloated, helpless mass of flesh called the Great Old Master where the young Niyogi will then lay their eggs on top of it, and when the hatchlings emerge, they'll devour the Great Old Master and one another, until only a few of the strongest newborns are left. Which definitely lets the Niyogi fit in with a horror theme. And at number four, we have the Ghost. This is a CR4 creature and definitely the most generic monster that will appear on this list, but I kind of have to mention the standard Ghost in this video, because it just fits in so well with Halloween and horror theme games specifically because of its horrifying visage ability. Where as an action, you make all non-undead creatures within 60 feet of the ghost who can see it perform a DC 13 wisdom saving throw, or be frightened for one minute. However, if anyone fails a saving throw by five or more, then the target also magically ages 10 years times 1d4. So if you're really unlucky, you can age 40 years by just failing this one saving throw. And this aging is basically permanent, and can only be reversed if you have a greater restoration spell cast on you within 24 hours of it occurring. And being forcibly, magically aged creates all kinds of roleplay moments, and can sometimes cause the death of some characters that are already old. I was in a game where one of the players was playing a retired paladin, who failed the saving throw by more than five and aged to a point where he was going to die really soon. And it kind of created its own branching side story after the fact, which expanded the campaign into its own thing. 
In addition, the ghost is also pretty capable in combat. It can sometimes possess a creature in order to control their body, and has a whole bunch of resistances to damage and immunities. So it's definitely hard to take down. But really, the best part of the ghost is just the extra effect from the horrifying visage, even if it is a pretty easy saving throw for a lot of classes to make. And at number three, we have the Dybbuk. The Dybbuk is a CR4 demon who has the ability to possess corpses. And while it's possessing a corpse, looks exactly like the creature looked like in life. It also gains the statistics and knowledge of the creature it possesses, and gains a whole bunch of temporary hit points equal to the creature's original hit point value. Although, what definitely lands the Dybbuk on this list is the horror potential it has in games. If there was a friendly NPC that died recently, you can have the Dybbuk possess their corpse and then come and meet the party later on. The Dybbuk is not proficient in pretending to be the corpse it possesses, so it's slightly different from the doppelganger, who's really good at pretending to be someone else. The Dybbuk relies more on shock value, as it has a trait called Violate Corpse, where as a bonus action it's able to contort the corpse it's occupying in an unnatural ways, such as vomiting blood or twisting their neck around, where it forces everyone who can see it perform a DC 12 wisdom saving throw or become frightened for one minute. However, while it's possessing a corpse, it's not able to cast its innate spells. So it just has whatever basic melee attacks the corpse previously had, as it also gains the proficiencies to use whatever weapons they had. But as soon as the Dybbuk is objected from the corpse, they can simply run away with Dimension Door, as they can cast it at will in order to possess another corpse and then attack the party again later. Just having a single Dybbuk constantly harass the party makes it an excellent creature for this list, even if it's not super deadly when it does engage the party in combat. It's just a creepy creature that's really good at getting away, made even better if one of the player characters dies, and it takes over one of their bodies later, to just have a really unsettling feature where the players will have to attack one of their previous friends. Especially since Dimension Door allows it to bring the corpse with it when it tries running away. And at number two, we have the Cataplepus. This is a CR5 creature that is a very spelly looking animal-like thing, with a serpent-like neck that has trouble lifting its head up, and one glare from its bloodshot eyes can rot flesh, as it has the ability called Death Ray, which it can use on one creature within 30 feet of it and force them to perform a DC 16 constitution saving throw, where on failure they just take a whole bunch of damage. And if they fail by 5 or more, they take 64 necrotic damage instead of 8d8. And if the ability lowers a target to zero hit points, it instantly kills the target. And this ability does so much damage that even if a player character succeeds the saving throw, if they're level three or lower, they might still just die from even taking half the damage. So this creature is just very dangerous with that death ray. But thankfully it has a recharge of five six, so it might only be able to use it one round the entire time you fight it. Although without its death ray, it has the stench trait, where creatures that start their turn within 10 feet of it have to succeed a constitution saving throw or be poisoned until the next turn. And it also has a tail attack, where it has a chance to stun creatures for a turn if they fail a constitution saving throw. Which is neat, but definitely the danger of this creature lies in that death ray. And with the lore of the creature being a walking, rotting calamity, where any territory it occupies becomes blighted, it definitely allows it to take a nice spot on this list. And at number one, we have the adult Oblix. The Oblix is actually an ooze creature, but a very smart one that's able to create clones of creatures that it's eaten the memories of. You see, it has an ability called Eat Memories, which it's able to perform as part of its multi-attack, where if the creature within 5 feet of it fails a DC 15 Wisdom saving throw, they take some psychic damage and then have their memories drained, which basically puts a debuff on them, where when they try to perform an attack or ability check, they have to subtract a D4 from those results. And the Oblex learns all the languages and proficiencies the targets it drains the memories from, and then is able to create a copy of them with its Sulfurous Impersonation ability. Where as a bonus action, the Oblex can extrude a piece of itself in order to create the appearance of a medium or small creature whose memories it had stolen. And this simulacrum that it creates looks, feels, and sounds exactly like the creature it's impersonating, with the only difference that it smells faintly of sulfur. And the Oblex is able to control it from up to 120 feet away and is able to control the simulacrum as if it was its own body, and uses all of its traits and abilities through it, so that its real body can stay 120 feet away behind a wall or something, just as long as there's an opening one inch wide from the little tether to connect the two. And the Obelix is able to impersonate up to five creatures at a time, and it's able to create a new one as only a bonus action. So, if it successfully eats the memories of a player character, it can then immediately use a bonus action to create a simulacrum of one of them, which has all their memories and can impersonate them perfectly. Which could cause some situations similar to what a doppelganger might be able to create, 
since the Obelix is smart enough to cause social confusion. In addition, the Obelix is able to cast some pretty good control spells. It can cast Charm Person at 5th level 3 times a day, which means it can target up to 5 characters, and has a chance to instantly charm an entire adventuring group. It can also hold Person at 3rd level, which means it can disable 2 party members at once, while it tries to eat the memories of everyone else. And just like the Doppelganger, the Obelix can just impersonate a friendly NPC that it probably killed earlier, and have it interact with the party since it has their memories and appearance, just as long as the main body is within 120 feet. Killing the Obelix can be done by just destroying the Simulacrum, since they both share the same body, as you can think of the Simulacrum it creates as being one of its body parts, and not an actual magical created thing. So even if it's able to create multiple copies of the Simulacrums, that doesn't necessarily give it extra actions. So the Obelix is a creature that definitely requires some creative use to get the full creepy aspect out of it but is definitely one of the more unique oozes that exist in the game, as it's basically a more advanced doppelganger. Alright, and that's the list. I made sure to include a couple of spots from each of the CR categories, and if you have any ideas for future videos similar to this one, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments. Maybe a video on a higher CR category creepy creatures, or grouping creatures with different kinds of categories, who knows?